We're down to our open forum, and at this time, persons desiring to address the Board of Trustees must fill out a speaker's card prior to the meeting. No presentation shall exceed three minutes. The Board cannot deliberate on any subject that is not included on the agenda. I have two cards. If anyone would like to have um, to speak, then if you will get a card, I uh, would be happy to hear you. The first speaker is Paige Shubbin. Good evening, board, Dr. Woodell. Um, I just wanted to address action item um, H1 that's on the agenda today, the uh, renovations to the LHS auditorium. Um, though, first of all, I want to say thank you for even considering a renovation. Um, but second of all, there's some questions that I would still like to see answered, and I ho would hope that you would ask those questions before you actually make a vote. The first one is that though brand new and adjacent to the um, concession stand sounds like a great idea, the fact that we're losing 500 seats concerns me. I would like to see um, some answers as to what are, what are some other options. It seems like in the agenda packet there was only listed two options. Um, bigger and old or smaller and new and I think there's some other ways that we can look at that and I would like to see you as a board because you're the ones that can ask those questions to be able to ask those questions and and get some answers for us um, I do know that many occasions the auditorium is full it is full on play performances it is full on um, LHS special nights um, church communities um, in the Louisville area they use the auditorium as well. I'd like to keep those things in mind. Though I don't think the school should pay for the, the community, I do want to remind you that in the bond election when that was proposed, that was one of the ways that the board then had it adopted was that they would allow the community to use the auditorium. So to remember that um, and just not just make a, a rubber stamp vote on this please. Maybe take a little bit of time, ask the community. I know it's on the agenda tonight, it's not to be voted on, but it is on the agenda tonight for the first time. And just give the community time to look at it and see what is the best option for our Louisville kids. When the new LHS design was presented to us, um, not last year, well, whenever it was presented to us, for the smaller um, LHS, one of the things that was given to us as a bonus, as a pool, whatever you'd like to call it, is that the auditorium would be the showcase of all of LISD. So the fact that we have more children at LHS, the fact that it is supposed to be the auditorium of the district, I would like to see it have that place. And instead of making it the same as everyone else, which if that's what everyone decides, then you know that's what everyone decides. But let's keep in mind that those are 500 seats that we're losing if we go to the smaller plan that is presented tonight. So just to keep an open mind, maybe take a minute, ask the public what they'd like, and um, but certainly thank you for considering it in the first place. Thank you. Doris Hale. Madam President and board members, my name is Doris Hale, and I reside here in Louisville on High School Drive, 406 High School Drive. And I'm here tonight because for a long time uh, we've had problems with parking along High School Drive caused by the adult soccer players using the track and field uh, at delay. Uh, they were given permission to use this field without the consideration of the neighborhood. Since then, we've had a variety of incidents. Uh, I suppose one of the first ones was uh, blinding floodlights, portable floodlights brought in for playing at night. And then we, they decided that there's not fac restroom facilities there, so they brought in pot uh, porta potties, which they parked on Main Street, on High School Drive. So that was something you had to go around. Uh, there are people gathering in our neighbor on neighborhood property without permission, men standing in streets, and they converse with their friends after a game and uh, leave their, stand there with their doors open. There are U-turns, uh, they sit on the street working on their uh, cars, uh, double park, motion to cars to go around them, uh, block driveways, and uh, cause buses to have to go down the center stripe. Then 
the big problem is the alcohol consumption. They leave their bottles and trash for school and neighbors to pick up. This field was not designed to accommodate large groups of men on the field. Definitely not enough parking or other facilities. Uh, I uh, called the high school one time and asked if they could come out there because they have all the facilities. They said absolutely not. So uh, I uh, uh, just uh, understand, I don't understand why only a few schools uh, are, are, uh, their fields are to be used by adult uh, soccer players. <laughs> I guess I left part of it at home. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the other uh, thing that I had to say was I had called um, Railroad Park to see if maybe these people could come out there. And uh, the first thing the Parks and Rec said, absolutely not, unless they are a registered league. They must be supervised. And I thought, well, that seemed kind of funny, you know. I thought it was for the public. But their reason being that if they were not uh, supervised, they tear up the area. And uh, they, uh, this costs uh, more uh, maintenance, manpower, and money, they said. So in summary, I guess that's the same thing that's happening down here at DeLay. Uh, they uh, are not, uh, they are uh, not, uh, uh, they're tearing up the field, they're leaving messes, and there's definitely not enough parking. So anyway, we have put up with a lot of problems on that street from these soccer players. And uh, I would like to see maybe if something could be done to correct this. And, and maybe as Nancy Reagan said about drugs, just say no. Maybe y'all could just say no to this situation. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I have no other cards.